Bible Seminar. Mula ngayon hanggang sa Viernes, tayo ay mag-aralang salita ng Diyos. Una sa lahat, magpasalamat sa Panginoon dahil ibinigay niya itong magandang pagkakataon upang mag-aralang salita ng Diyos. Test. Uh, makinig po kayo mabuti. Ito ay napakamahalaga. Okay, so before we start, uh, let's all pray. Holy and gracious, our Heavenly Father God, who created the heavens and the earth, thank you so much for giving us this wonderful chance to learn the Word of God together. From today until this Friday, we are going to study your word together. Please open our heart and let us incline our ear to the word of God. We believe God really desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why God gave us this uh, precious opportunity to listen to your word. Lord, there are many newcomers who are listening to the word of God. Please help them to realize what is the real purpose of our life and also what is the will of God through this Bible seminar. From the beginning of this Bible seminar until the end, the Holy Spirit is with us and guide us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, first let's open the Bible. Psalms 49, verse 1-2. Psalms 8, 49, verse 1 and verse 2. Psalms 8, 49, verse 1-2. Okay, babasahin ko po. Pakinggan ninyo ito, kayong lahat ng mga bayan. Pakinggan ninyo kayong lahat ng mga mananaman sa daigdig. Maging mababa at taas, mayaman at tulpa, na magpakasama. Okay, from today until this Friday, uh, we are going to study this Bible together. Simula ko sa araw na ito hanggang sa Viernes, sama-sama ko natin pag-aaral natin itong India. Uh, we should know this Bible is really important. Dapat alam ko natin na ang India na ito ay napakahalala. Most of the people, they are busy because of their physical life. Kadalasan po sa mga tao, sila ay kadalasan na awala sa kanila pong buhay. But while we are living in this world, uh, we must solve our spiritual problem. Because physical life is not all. After death, there will be another life. That's why, while we are living in this world, we must solve this spiritual problem. Here, Psalms 49, verse 1 and 2 says, Here it is all peoples, give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. If you read the Bible, you can understand God is calling the people. All the people, uh, so both low and high, rich and poor. Yeah, all the inhabitants of the world, 
they should come to the God and they should listen to the word of God. Because there is a really important messaging. According to Psalms 49, verse 3 also says, My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. Psalms 49, verse 3. So, in order to solve our spiritual problem, we must listen to the Word of God. I think there are many newcomers. Uh, you are invited by your family members or your friends or your neighbors. We should know why your family members, friends, and neighbors invited you to attend this Bible seminar. Because there is really important things in our life. Here, Psalms, uh, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3, also says, Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3, Baba Sain Kopo. Yeah, incline your ear and come to me. Here, here is also God is calling the people. We should incline our ear to the word of God. And we should listen to the word of God very carefully. According to the Romans chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What is the first step to have a faith? Now we should incline our ear to the word of God and we should listen to the word of God. And also Bible says why we should incline our ear to the word of God. Bible says your soul shall live. Actually, uh, later I will explain, all the people when we were born in this world, we were born as a descendant of Adam. And when we were born, we were dead in spiritually. That's why, through the word of God, our dead spirit should live again. There is God's promise. So if we really incline to the word of, incline our ear to the word of God and listen carefully, our dead spirit shall live again. Okay, let me give you one example. There are three kinds of cups. These cups imply what kind of heart should be prepared for learning the Bible. Number one, if you look at this cup, this cup is upside down. Although we are trying to put the water inside the cup, we cannot fill it up. Because this cup is upside down. And second, this is the right position, right side up. But there is problem. This cup is already filled with so many gravels. 
Yung pangalawang baso naman po, nasa tamang posisyon siya, ito ay nakatikaya, ngunit ang problema, meron na po itong laman na mga balo. That's why we can feel the water, only a little water. Kaya po, pwede tayo maglagay ng tubig, kaunting tubig na ma'am. But last one, number three, this is the right position, right side up. That's why we can feel all the water inside the cup. At yung pinakawaling baso, ito po ay nasa tamang posisyon, na pwede po natin itong lagyan, mga pwede po natin itong pulungin. What does it mean? Number one, cup the upside down, no interest. Maybe somebody is sitting, who is sitting and invited your family or your friends, but you don't want to listen. That's why you close your heart. If you don't open your heart, although you are listening to the Word of God, you cannot realize. Yeah, so, no interest. This is the problem. We should change our mind. And number two, somebody open their heart, but their heart is full of the many other things. They are thinking others. If your heart is filled with so many worldly things, maybe you cannot also receive the word of God properly. And when you have the when you really open your heart and the, listen to the word of God very carefully with a good heart, you can realize really important things. We should not rely on our own experience or our own the prejudice. For example, there are three types of uh, deep well. Inside the deep well, there is a Prague. The Prague is born and then Prague lived for all its life there. One day, these three Prague's gathered one place and they start the debate. Yeah, what is the figure of the sky? So, number one frog came out from the round uh, deep well. He will insist. The figure of the sky is round. And number two, the frog came out from the triangle deep well. He will insist. According to his experience, the figure of the sky is triangle. And number three, the last one who came, the frog came out from the square, he will assist. He also insists uh, his, uh, his opinion. According to his experience, the figure of the sky is square. Although they insist their opinion, if they do not know what is the real truth, all they are wrong. Maybe when they come out from the deep well and then when they look at the real figure of the sky, they will surprise. It is also saying, in order, the, in order to study the Word of God properly, we should open our heart and we should incline our ear to the Word of God. What is the purpose of this Bible seminar? Why your family members, friends, and neighbors invited you to attend this Bible seminar? 
Kami po ang inyong mga kaibigan, kami bahay, kapamilya ay inyong kayo sa Bible 7 na ito. Because of this purpose. Dahil po sa lady na ito. John chapter 5, verse 39 and 40, basahin po natin sabay-sabay. Ito ay, sinasalik si Tinyo ang mga kasalatan sapagkat ang inisip nito na sa mga ito ay meron kayo buhay na walang hanggan at iyon ang nagpapatotoo tungkol sa akin. Yes. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Why we should search? Why we should study the Bible? Because while we are studying the Word of God, we can have a eternal life. Bakit po kailangan natin salisikin ang Biblia? Bakit kailangan natin pag-aralan ang salita ng Diyos? Okay. So, the purpose of the Bible seminar is eternal, eternal life. Ang layunin po ng Bible seminar ay upang magkakuha ng buhay na walang hanggan. So, how can we get the eternal life? Kaya paano tayo magkakaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan? According to the John chapter 17 verse 3, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you, whom you have sent. Sabi po sa 1 chapter 17 verse 3, Ang ito ang buhay na walang hanggan, na ito ay makilala nila na yung isang Diyos na tunay, at si Yesu Cristo na iyong sinubo. Number one, we must know who is the only true God. Pinakauna, dapat ay makilala po natin kung sino po ang tunay na Diyos. Through this Bible seminar, From today until Wednesday, we are going to study about God. Do you know who is God? Many people, they will say, I already know who is God. So, can you explain the what kind of attributes of God according to the Bible exactly? And also important things. Do you have a right relationships with God? Maybe you may know who is the president of the Philippines. Hmm? President Duterte. Maybe you, you can say, I know who is the president of the Philippines. But if you visit uh, Malacanang and then you wanted to meet the president. So, if you say to the people, I came here to meet the President Duterte, so can you meet him? I think it's, uh, it's not possible. They will not allow. Yeah, although you can say you know who is the president, but actually you do not know exactly about the Duterte. Like this, many people, they can say, I know God, but actually they don't have the right knowledge of the God. And also, we should know who is the Jesus Christ. All these are they testify of me. So Bible, Old Testament and New Testament testify who is Jesus Christ. If we do not know who is Jesus Christ exactly, we cannot get the eternal life. What is the Old Testament? That is the promise of God. God will send us Messiah who is Jesus Christ. And what is the New Testament? New Testament is also uh, written the what Jesus Christ did for us. So we can say Old Testament, 39 books, and New Testament, 
27 books, all these Bible testify who is Jesus Christ. So among these Bible, 66 books, if we summarize the most important word in the Bible, that is Jesus Christ. So, you search the scriptures for in them, you think you have eternal life, and these are they, please testify of me. This Bible testifies who is God and also who is Jesus Christ. From today until this Friday, if you attend this Bible seminar continuously, you will get the eternal life as the gift of God. But Bible says, why the people they cannot get the eternal life? Was it? What is it? But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Yeah. This is the problem. They don't have interest and they don't want. So I really hope those who are attending to this Bible seminar, this Bible seminar is like a series from the day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five until the last day. It is connected. If you skip the second day and third day, and if you attend the last day, you cannot understand. You cannot get the eternal life. So please attend this Bible seminar continuously without missing. Okay, who is God? Sino po ang Dios? Who is God? Can you explain who is God? Yeah, some people know God is creator, uh, God is love, and God is uh, spirit, and God is holy. Yeah, we know some of the attributes of God. But we must have the right knowledge of God through this Bible. John chapter 4 verse 24 says, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Number one, why we cannot see God? Because God is spirit. Spirit does not have the flesh. Spirit does not have the bone. So Luke chapter 24 verse 39 says, For spirit does not have the flesh and bones. Yes, we should know God is spirit. That's why God is invisible. Do you know the visible things are just temporary in this world, but invisible things are eternal? Actually, our flesh, our body is visible. That's why our life is, according to the Bible, 70 or 8 years. And after you die, your body will return to the dust. But what about our spirit? Our spirit is not, in the, is not visible. That's why our spirit lives forever. Yeah. 
Act to chapter 17, verse 24 and 25. Bawasahin ko po. Ang Diyos na gumawa na sa nilutan at ang lahat ng mga bagay na nandito, siya na Panginoon ng langit at ang lupa ay hindi tumitira sa mga tempo ang ginawa ng tao, hindi rin naman siya pinagdilituran ng mga kamay ng mga ng tao na para bang mayroon siyang kailangan lamang siya nagbibigay sa lahat ng tao ng buhay at ng kina at ang lahat ng bagay na ito. Yeah, Bible says, God who made the world and everything in it. Sabi po ng Diyos, ang Diyos na gumawa ng sanlibutan at ang lahat ng bagay na ito. And also God gives to all life, breathe, and all things. At isa pa po ang Diyos na nagbibigay sa lahat ng tao ng buhay at ang hininga at ang lahat ng bagay na ito. We should know, without God, we cannot exist. Dapat malaman po natin, kung wala ang Diyos, tayo ay wala. But some people, they don't believe in God because they cannot see God. Yeah, first Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 says, Who alone has immortality, dwelling in in a portable line, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom uh, be honor and everlasting power. Amen. According to the Exodus chapter 33, Moses asked the prayer to God, God, please show me your glory. At that time, God answered, If you see me, you shall die. No man shall live who see me. Because God is holy and God is perfect and God is uh, almighty God. That's why our man, we are imperfect. That's why we cannot see God. Yeah. One day, uh, let me tell you one story. One day, the grandfather, grandmother, and grandson, they were sitting in one place and then to- they talking each other. Grandmother is a sincere Christian. But grandfather is not, does not believe in God. So grandfather asked the grandson, Grandson, son, can you see the bird in the sky? Can you see the cow in the field? Grandson answered, yes, I can see it. Grandfather explained, you can see the bird and cow because it is real exist. Grandfather asked another question. Can you see God? Grandson was not able to answer because he cannot see God. And grandfather explained, there is no God because you cannot see God. Because grandfather is an unbeliever. That's why while uh, the grandmother is listening to the conversation between grandfather and grandson, grandmother got angry. And grandmother also asked the same question. Can you see the cow? Can you see the bird? Mm-hmm. Grandson answered, yes, yes. And grandmother asked, asked another question. Can you see the brain of your grandfather? Grandson answered, no, I cannot see his brain. Hmm? Grandmother explained, your grandfather has no brain because you cannot see it. Yeah, it's really foolish, right? So those who don't believe, 
Bible also says, Psalms chapter 14, verse 1, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. According to the scientists, this world consists of the visible things and invisible things. Visible things only 22%. Invisible things are much more than the visible things. Yeah, for example, air, electric wave, sound, power, gravity, conscience, spirit, God. We cannot see it. We cannot see the air, but we believe the existence of air. Maybe if the air disappeared around 10 minutes, all the people shall die here. This world consists of the visible things and invisible things. Bacteria, virus, we cannot see it with our naked eye. But we, cannot, we can see it through the microscope. Yeah. And the stars. Uh, over the sky, we cannot see it with our naked eye, but through the telescope, we can see the uh, stars. And also, there are so many signals and waves, but we cannot see it. But through the TV, we can see this the existence of the signal and then electric waves. Yeah. Like this, God is invisible, but how can we see God? We can see God through the Bible. So, God already gave us several ways. How can we see God? Number one, through the God's creation. If you look at the Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. First Bible verse introduced God as a creator. It means without God, nothing can exist. So when we look at the God's creation, we can also believe God's existence. And number two, God gave us conscience. What is the conscience? If you look at the con, this word conscience, actually this is the combined two words. One is the con, and the other is science. Con means together. Science means to know. So, conscience means if we interpret it, knowing together. Although there is no one, but when you commit sin, you shall feel guilty. There is the response from the, your conscience. Because between you and God know each other. Yeah. 
So through these conscience, we can also know the existence of God. And God also revealed Himself through His real. Tomorrow we are going to study about history of Israel. If you study the history of Israel, you will clearly understand the existence of God. And also, we can know God through Jesus Christ. And we can believe the existence of God through the Bible. That's why uh, we are studying this Bible. Why should we study the Bible? So, according to the John chapter 1, verse 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, basahin po natin, sabay-sabay. Ayon sa Biblia, ang salita ay Diyos. So, this Bible, this is the Word of God, this is the God. It means God revealed Himself through the Word of God. So, let's think about how this Bible was written. First Bible, Genesis, it was written by Moses. B.C. 1,500. From now, 3,500 years, a long time ago. Last book is the Revelation. It was written by Apostle John. And it was written 180. From now, 1,900 years ago. So, how long did it take to record all this Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Huh? 1,600 years. 1,900 years. So, 1,600 years to record all this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It was written by the different people and different uh, places and different countries. According to the biblical scholars, there are around 40 recorders of this Bible. But if you read this Bible, you may understand, it seems like it was written by just one man. Because the prophet and servant of God, they received the word of God and recorded it. So, according to the Old Testament, uh, there are 3,800 times repeated. God said, Sinabi ng Diyos. So, we should know this Bible is not the word of man, but the word of God. So, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. For example, there is one prophet, and the word of God uh, came to the Jeremiah, and Jeremiah received the word of God, and he recorded. This is the book of Jeremiah. Yes. 
Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 1 to Babasahin ko po. Ang salita ng Lord kay Jeremias mula sa Panginoon na sinasabi, Ganito ang sabi ng Panginoon ng Diyos ng Israel, Isulat mo sa isang plat ang lahat ng mga salita na aking sinabi sa iyo. That's why God is prophet and God's servant who record the Bible, we call them uh, recorder. Kaya po yung lahat ng mga propeta at record ng Diyos na nagsula, Yeah, they just receive the word of God and record it. Yeah, Prophet Ezekiel also saying, he received the word of God and record it. This is the book of Ezekiel. Nowadays, people, they found many copies of the dif different copies of the Bible. Long time ago, there was not a paper. That's why they used the animal skin to record the Bible. And later, they also used the papyrus to record the Bible. Yeah, according to the biblical scholars, Bible came from the word of the papyrus. So, according to the 2018, Bible is already translated 3,350 different languages. Here in the Philippines, we have uh, so many different uh, versions of the Bible. Tagalog, Isaya, Ilocano, uh, Picolano. Sa Pilipinas, kung makakita tayo yung bali mong klase ng India, meron kong Tagalog, Isaya, Ilocano, Picolano. But, if you look at the end of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, verse 18, 19, there is very important messaging. According to this passage, God said, if anyone add to these things, God will add to him the plague that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the book of the life, book of the this prophecy, God will God shall take his part from the book of life. Actually, this is the warning from God. If anyone add something on this Bible, God will add him the plague, disaster. Or if someone removes some part of the Bible, God will remove his name from the book of life. Because God does not allow to change any part of the Bible since it is finished. So how can we know whether this Bible is changed or not? There is evidence. Uh, 1947, nearby the Dead Sea, there is the Kumnan Cave. And then some shepherd found the Dead Sea Scrolls inside the cave. So, according to the biblical scholars, the Dead Sea Scrolls was written around BC 300, 200 or 300 years ago. BC. So from now, 2,300 years ago, it was written. So biblical scholars, they compared 
the Dead Sea Scrolls and the present Bible, if there is any difference. Yeah, this is the Dead Sea Scrolls inside the jar. But it is proved that they are absolutely the same as the present Bible. Maybe some people mis misunderstand. Oh, this Bible, maybe as time goes on, some people they correct or they add something or they remove the, some part. No, that's wrong. As the Bible says, nobody changed this Bible since it is written. Let's look at uh, this video clip. Deep in the heart of the Judean wilderness, on the edge of the Dead Sea, in a place called Qumran, came some of the most significant artifacts of modern times, the Dead Sea Scrolls. For two millennia, the Dead Sea Scrolls lay hidden in a leather case throughout the Qumran area. Their discovery marked the biggest archaeological find of the 20th century. To learn more, we hiked up to one of those 11 caves with Stephen Vaughn, founder of the University of the Holy Land, and an expert on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Why are they so important to us today? The uh, reason why the Dead Sea Scrolls are important is because they confirm the Bible that we have. There's variance, but basically it's, you can hardly tell the difference between the two texts that we have in Quran and in our Bibles. The scrolls provide a 2,000-year-old link between the scriptures during the time of Jesus and today. Because we can actually hold the same scrolls in our hands that they held in their hands 2,000 years ago. And when somebody sits there with their New Testament and Bibles in the, in the United States and they're, they're listening to their favorite sermon, they can know that this Bible was based upon manuscripts that people held in their hands from 2,000 years ago. Now, for the first time since 1967, the original scroll of Isaiah, perhaps the most significant part of the entire discovery, is on display at the Israel Museum. We thought that the best way uh, to honor the state of Israel is to bring back this major treasure of the Jewish nation for the celebration of the sixth anniversary of the country. It's hard to overstate the amazing coincidence that this massive scrolls were discovered around the same time, in the same month that the state of Israel was proclaimed and was founded here in the land again. Reutman explains why the scroll of Isaiah holds a special significance for Christians. That we have only one instance in all the Gospels that actually we have Jesus reading from a scroll, as in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, that the, the, on Shabbat, on Saturday, in Nazareth, uh, he was given uh, the book of Isaiah, and he read from the book, the famous passage in Isaiah chapter 61. The words Jesus quoted from Isaiah 61 were, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Two thousand years ago, the Isaiah scroll and many others were hidden in the caves near Quran. Two thousand years later, the scrolls still speak to us today. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Quran. Through the Dead Sea Scroll, we can understand the Bible it was not changed at all since it is written. Yeah. Is the Bible really God's word? How can we believe the Bible is really God's word or just uh, it is written by the man?
Paano po natin malalaman na hindi ay ito din ang salita ng Diyos? Kapag ito ay salita lamang ang tao. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 21 and 20 says, 22 says, Sabi po sa luto ng Diyos, chapter 18, mula verse 21 hanggang 22. Babasahin ko po. At kung inyong sasalitin sa inyong puso, paano namin malalaman ang salita ay hindi sinabi ng Panginoon? Kapag ang isang pameta ay nagsasalita sa pangalan ng Panginoon, kung ang bagay na sinabi o ay hindi nalala, hindi nagkatotoo, ang salita ng iyon ay hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, ang pameta ng iyon ay nagsalita ng may kapakahasan, huwag ko siya katatakutan. Yeah. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the things does not happen or come to pass, it is the things which the Lord has not spoken. What does it mean? If it is really God's word, there will be the evidence. Ano po ibig sabihin ito? Ito po ay tunay na salita ng Diyos, dapat ay meron itong ebidensya. Yeah. So, through the evidence, we can believe this Bible is really true and God's word. Kaya sa pamamagitan po na mga ebidensya, maniniwala tayo na ang media ay salita ng Diyos at ito ay katotohanan. There are so many evidences, scientific evidences, historical and archaeological evidences. Napakadali po mga ebidensya, mga ebidensya sa scientifico, sa kasaysayan, at sa archaeological. So, we will study about these evidences one by one. Kaya po, pag-aakala natin isa-isa ang mga ebidensya na ito. And also important things, one-third of the Bible is the God's prophecy. At isa po pong bagay, ang one-third ng media na ito ay puro prophesya. So how the prophecy of God is fulfilled and how the prophecy of God is really achieved, we can believe this Bible is really true and God's word. Especially through the history of Israel and the prophecy in the last days, uh, we can uh, understand how the prophecy of God is exactly fulfilled. Lalo na po sa pamamagitan ng kasaysayan ng Israel at sa katuparan ng propesya sa mga huling araw, mapapatunayin po natin na ito po ay totoo. So, before Jesus Christ come to this world, we call this B.C. Bago po dumating siya si Cristo sa mundo ito, inatawag natin ito B.C. And after Jesus Christ come to this world, we call this A.D. Ano Domini. At pagkatapos na lumating siya si Cristo sa mundo ito, inatawag po natin itong AD, Anno Domini. So, the oldest the copies of the Bible that was a Masoretic text in, uh, from now 900 years ago. Ang pinakaluma po na kopya ng Biblia na may mong tayo, ang Masoretic text, ito po ay naisulat, ito po ay 900 years ago na. But that is a scroll from now, 2,300 years ago. So biblical scholars, they compared that is a scroll and present Bible, whether it is same or different. And then they came to know, it is proved. It is exactly the same. Bible is not changed at all since it is written. Okay, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, basahin po natin, sabay-sabay. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is the first Bible verse in the Bible. Ito po yung pinakaunang talata sa Biblia, ang pasimula ng ilikha ng Diyos, ang langit at ang iba. From now, we are going to study about God's creation. Simula po ngayon, pag-aaralan po natin ang ilikha ng Diyos. First, we must know God is a creator. Pinakauna, dapat malaman po natin, ang Diyos ay tagapaglikha. Ang Diyos ay tagapaglikha. Creator. Without God, we cannot exist. Tagapaglikha. Kung wala ang Diyos, tayo po ay wala. Here is a very nice house. Very good design, nice design. What do you think this house? Is it uh, suddenly happened by accident or somebody designing it and uh, built this house? 
Ano po sa palagay niyo? Bigla na lamang po ba na sumulpot ng aksidente itong bahay na ito? O meron na disenyo at nagtayo? If somebody says, oh, suddenly the, this house happened uh, by accident and you cannot believe. Kapag may nagsabi po na, ah, itong bahay na ito, ibig na lang ang sumulpot dito. Kung ganun, hindi ka maniniwala. According to our thought, yeah, somebody designed the house and then built this house. Sa atin pong isip, meron pong nagdesenyo at nagtayo ng bahay na ito. Yeah, Bible says, Hebrew chapter 3 verse 4, for every house is built by someone. Ayon po sa Lydia, sabi sa Hebrew chapter 3 verse 4, at ang bawang bahay ay pinagtayo. But all things who built is God. Ngunit ang lahat ng mga bagay ay ginawa ng Diyos. So, one Filipino farmer made the same design in Filipino style. Kaya po sa Filipino style, mayroon isang magsasaka na ginawa yung paparehas na design. Yeah, same design, right? Parehas po yung design, huh? tama po? Very budget, the, with the low budget. Kaya po talagang tinibig yung budget. Yeah, even this, the... This humble house, it is built by someone. So Hebrews chapter 3 verse 4 says, for every, but, uh, for every house is built by someone, but all things who built is God. In order to build uh, some house, the engineer the will make a design and the constructor will the build the house. Yeah, like this. God created heavens and the earth. God clearly declares the in the first Bible verse, Genesis chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26 says, Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Here is a bird's nest. Who made this? Ibon, right? Bird made its nest. There is a beautiful house. Every house is built by someone. There is some engineer and or some the constructor. They build this house. There is watch. What about this watch? This watch also made by someone. Yeah, there are many parts of the watch. What about car? Around 20,000 parts of the car. It is very complicated. But what about airplane? It is much more complicated. What about the earth? Ears, is it happened by accident? No, Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. All the universe, this is uh, God's creation. Okay, there is the door. Ano yan sa loob? Alam niyo po? Hindi mo alam. You have no idea what's inside. But I know what's inside because I made this. Inside the, inside the door, there is the baby monkey. Okay, look at. Tama po ba? Yeah, baby monkey. I can tell you because I prepared this. Like this, God creator. That's why God also can explain about uh, God's creation.
From now, around 500 years ago, the people uh, depict flat earth just 500 years ago. That's why they far away from the earth, they will fall down. But uh, around 15th century, Christopher Columbus, he found America. And they came to know the earth is round. Yeah, just around 500 years ago, they, they knew this. But Bible says, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, from now 2,700 years ago, Bible already explained the earth is round. Yeah, this circle, the circle of the earth. Round, the earth is round. And also, Job chapter 26, verse 7. Baba sa ko po. He stretches out the north over the empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. Job was written from now 3,500 years ago. Yeah, 3,500 years ago, Job, how did he know? Huh? The God hangs the earth on nothing in the universe. Nineteen sixty-nine, the space shuttle Apollo. They went to the moon at the first time. No, and then the people, they saw the, the earth. The earth hangs on nothing. Yeah, nowadays it is a common sense. But 3,500 years ago, how this job came to know? Because this is the God's word. God created all the heavens and the earth. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. Yeah, the Lord who created the heavens, who is God, God is creator. And also important things, who has established it, who did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. You know, the, according to the scientists, in order to uh, living creatures can be survived on the earth, around 200,000 conditions should be satisfied. From the distance, from the sun to the earth, and also size of the earth and the rotation speed. Huh? All these the conditions, when it is satisfied, living creatures can be survived on the earth. Yeah, from sun to earth, Distance is 150 million kilometers, exactly. Who set this distance? Is that by accident? No. God 
created the heavens and the earth. When the earth set on this the green, the life zone, living creatures can be survived. Yeah, 200,000 conditions. It is not by accident. And the speed of rotation, 1,660 kilometers. Huh? Every day, once a day, huh? the rotate, the 1,000, around the 10 times the fast speed. When you run in the highway, expressway, 160 kilometers, it is very fast, right? But although the earth is run at the speed 1,660 kilometers, can you feel the speed? No. Huh? Because the earth created to be inhabited. Yeah. Who determined its measurement? Who stretched the line upon it? God made this distance. And then the size of the earth and the speed, yeah, everything. Before the earth, there is the Venus. What about the temperature of the Venus? Because of the severe greenhouse effect, over 480 centigrade. There is no living creatures in the Venus. What about Mars? Winter season negative 120 centigrade. It is too cold. There is no living creatures. And Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Okay. Baba Sainko po. Sinabi ng Diyos, simulan ang lupa ng halaman ng mga tanim na nagkakabiti at ang punong ng punong apoy na nagbubuka ayon sa kanyang bibi, ang bawat isa ayon sa kanyang kulit sa ibabaw ng lupa at ito ay nangyari. Yeah, let the earth bring forth grass, herbs, yield the seed, and fruits, treed, yet uh, yield the fruits according to its kind. So, we have uh, so many vegetables, fruits, and flowers. Hmm? For example, what will happen if God gave only one vegetable? Every day, you, will, you, you can only cook the same menu. Is it okay for you? Huh? Every day you can have only one menu? God gave us so many different kinds of vegetables and also different kinds of the fruits also. And also look at the flowers, how beautiful it is. This is God's creation. Have you ever heard about Fibonacci sequence? One and one plus two, three. And two plus three, five. Three, uh, three plus five, eight. And eight plus thirteen, twenty-one. Like this. This is the sequence. Yeah, the numbers will go like this. 
According to this Fibonacci sequence, if we make a design, this design will be a spiral design. We call this golden ratio. The most beautiful and the perfect design. If you look at the some seashells or some something, the it follows this uh, golden ratio according to the Fibonacci sequence. Yeah, plants. You can see the Fibonacci sequence from the plants and also from the hurricane and also galaxy in the universe. What does it mean? It came from the same designer. Who is it? Ang Dios. God created all these things. So look at the flower so. This flower so follow this Fibonacci sequence. You can find one flower leaf. Yeah. Flower leaves also follow the Fibonacci sequence. You can easily find the one flower leaves, but it's very difficult to find two flower leaves. One after three. Right? And also you can, it's very difficult to find the four flower leaves. Three after five, five, uh, five the flower leaves. And after that, eight. According to the Fibonacci sequence, right? One, three, five, eight. And next, 13. It is not by accident. It is designed by God. And also look at the, some plants. The law and the design. Yeah, this leaves this side, and this one this side, this side, this side, uh, like this, according to the law. Uh, who made this design? And these plants, yeah, two leaves here, and here two, also two, in the same way. This one also. Here and three leaves. Three leaves. Same, same style. Who made this design? It is not by accident. It is created by God. So, through this God's creation, we can also believe God's existence. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. Okay, Baba sign ko po. Wala pa nang likhain ang sandibutan, ang kanyang walang hanggang papangyarihan at pagkadyos, bagaman hindi nakikita ay naunawaan at nakita sa pamamagitan ng, bagay, ng mga bagay na kanyang ginawa upang wala silang makikita nila. So, for since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are 
clearly seen through the God's creation. Ang kanyang walang hanggang kapangyarihan at pagka Diyos, pag naman ang kanyang kita, ay nakawaan at nakita sa pumamagitan ng mga bagay na kanyang ginawa. So when we look at small flower, we can believe, oh, this is really beautiful. This is God's creation. Kaya kapag nakakita tayo ng maliit na ulap na, at ito ay napakaganda, maniniwala tayo na ito ay nilita ng Diyos. Yeah, it is not by accident. Hindi po ito sa gamit ang accident eh. Hmm. And also, when you look at the uh, animal, you will be also amazed huh? because of the God's creation. Job chapter 12 verse 7 says, Basahin po natin, sabay-sabay. Now ask the beast and they will teach you. And the bird of the air, and they will tell you. If you look at the animals and the bird, uh, you, you will be amazed also. I will show you one video clip. How the dog is very smart. Kaya, may papakita ko ang video dito kung naano katalito ang aso.
this dog is very clever. Yeah, if you have this kind of dog, maybe it will be very helpful. Yeah. Like this, when you look at uh, some animal or some bird, you may also clearly understand all these, these, these things created by God. Do you know the wise dog does not bite the thief? Wise dog will uh, throw the brick instead of the bite. It is very dangerous. Be careful. What about the man? <laughs> Let's open the Bible. Psalms uh, 139, verse 13 and 14. Okay, Baba sign ko po. Sa pagkat hinubog mo ang aking mga nasa loob na bahagi at sa bagay bagay na ng aking ina, ako ay iyong tinali, ako ay magpapasalamat sa iyo sa pagkat ang pagkagawa sa akin ay kakilakilapot at kamangapangka, ang iyong mga gawa ay kamangapangkat at iyong ay nalalamang pamuti ng aking kaliwa. Yeah. For you formed my inward part. You covered me in my mother's womb. Sa pagkat hinubog mo ang aking mga nasa loob na bahagi when the baby is formed inside the mother's womb, uh, which will be made first, the bone or flesh? Alam niyo po? Flesh first, and the later bones. But if the man made something, he will man will make a bone first, right structure first, and then after the flesh. But God is different. You formed my inward part, and you covered me in my mother's womb. That's why I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. When we look at our body, it is also amazing. But we should know why the man is really precious. Because of the spirit, we are really precious than any other animal. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Okay, basahin po natin, sabay-sabay. Sinabi ng Diyos na nang inakin ng tao sa ating larawan, ayon sa ating makis, kaya nilalang ng Diyos ng tao ayon sa kanyang sariling larawan, ayon sa larawan ng Diyos siya na nilalang, sila'y kanyang nilalang na laki at babae. Yeah, then God said, let us make man in our image. What does it mean? According to the John chapter 4, God is spirit. So, man is created according to God's image, that means we receive spirit from God. So God created man in his own image. Actually, our appearance, our flesh, this is not this is not real the myself. This is just flesh. So when you die, your flesh will return to the dust. 
Ito po ay laman lamang, kaya kapag tayo ay namatay, yung katawan natin, ito ay babalik sa lupa. The real, the yourself inside of you. That is the spirit. Ang tunay na ikaw na nasa loob mo, ito yung iyong espiritu. That's why man is really precious and valuable than any other animals. Kaya po yung tao ay higit na mahalaga kaysa sa anumang hayo. Look at this video clip. Tignan po natin ang video clip na ito. So, man is really special, and man is really precious and valuable. But most of the people, they only focus on their physical life, only their flesh. They don't consider the importance of their spirit. Through this Bible seminar, we are not talking about our flesh. We are focusing on the matter of our spirit. Because Jesus said the spirit is much more important than the flesh. And also we should know Death is not the end. After death, there will be another life. After death, there will be another life. According to the Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, and as it is appointed for a man to die once, but after this, the judgment. After this, there will be the God's judgment. <clears throat> and according to God's judgment, if you ever sin, you will go to the eternal hell. If you don't have any sin, you can enter the eternal heaven. This is not the end. After death, there will be another life. 
While we are living in this world, we must prepare to stand before God's judgment. There are so many people who experience their deaths. We call them near-death experience. Look at this beautifully. the same uh, testimony, those, those who experience their deaths. When they died, their spirit came out, and then the spirit looked at down the dead body. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, man consists of the spirit, soul, and body. So, human means body plus spirit. There is the spirit and soul and body. Because of body, we have a uh, basic instinct and also the desire. And also desire of the soul, knowledge, emotion, and will. Because of the spirit, we have a religious mind, also we have a conscience, and we are yearning for the eternity. So, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11 says, He has put eternity in their hearts. It means God put the eternity in our hearts. 
Sabi mo sa Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, uh, inilagay niya ang walang hanggan sa puso ng tao. So our body, when we die, we will return to the dust. Kaya pagkatapos po natin mamatay, ang ating katawan, ito po ibabalik sa alamong. So our body, the element of our body, if we compare with the element of the dust, it is exactly the same. Ang ating puso, kung titignan natin, yung, uh, yung ating katawan, kung titignan natin yung elemento dito, yun at yun yung bago, parehas lamang sila. Same element. Parehas po ng elemento. So, when you die, your body will return to the dust. But your spirit will go to God. And there will be God's judgment. While we are living in this world, we must prepare this. Before we were born in this world, We were in our mother's womb for nine months. Tama po ba? So we can say, this nine months, this is the period for our physical life, 70 or 8 years. And, While we are living in this world for 70 or 80 years, we also should prepare for our eternal life. According to your preparation, your eternal destiny will be changed. If you are really saved through the word of God, you can enter eternal heaven. But if you are not saved, you shall receive the judgment and you shall be cast into the lake of hellfire. Saan gusto niyo pupunta? Sa langit o sa impyerno? Yeah, everybody wanted to enter the eternal heaven. But important things, if you are not ready, if you are not really saved, you cannot enter the eternal heaven. According to the Bible, our life, 70 or 8 years. Psalms chapter 90 verse 10 says, for the... Uh, Okay, let's look at Psalms chapter 90, verse 10. The days of our lives are 70, if the reason of the strength they are 80. Yet their boast is labor and sorrows. It is soon cut off, we fly away. Yeah, the days of our lives, 70. Or if someone is strong, 18. But Bible says, we fly away. How fast it? Someone said, our life is from womb to the tomb. From womb to womb. It is very short. And it is very fast. Look at this video clip. How fast is it?
life is short. According to this video clip, from womb to tomb, it took less than one minute. So, as I said, the purpose of this Bible seminar is to get eternal life. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a purpose. Let me ask you a question. What is the purpose of your life? Do you know the purpose of your life? Maybe someone said, oh, I will make a money, I will become rich. Or I will become the famous man, famous man. Is that really purpose of your life? Bible says, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uh, plug what is planted. But we should know, we, God has put the eternity in our hearts. That's why we are yearning for the eternity. Our spiritual matter is much more important than the physical matter. There is durian. Do you like it? Durian? I like the durian. But which do you eat? The skin of the durian or inside the fruits? There is no one who eats the skin. We will eat inside the fruits. Yeah, like this. Our flesh is like just the skin. Import, more important thing is our spirit. So Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. Basahin po natin, sabay-sabay. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Well, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? It means there is nothing to exchange with your soul, with your spirit. Although you get the whole world, but if you leave, lose your soul, it is nothing, meaning this. We must know how much our spirit is really important. Yeah. What is the purpose of your life? Many people, they are pursuing for their success, power, knowledge, pleasure, money. But this is not real purpose of our life. We came to this world to get the eternal life. So we must solve this problem through this Bible seminar. According to the Luke chapter 12, from verse 16, there is an important uh, parable said by Jesus. There was a one rich man. He worked very hard and he harvested a lot of things. That's why his barn was not enough to store all these things. That's why he pulled out his barn and then built it greater. And then he laid up many things in his barns. 
And verse 9 says, Saul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, drink, eat, drink, and be merry. Okay, verse 20, ito ay napakamahalaga. Okay, basahin po natin, sabay-sabay, verse 20. Yeah, this rich man, after he laid up many things, he said, Let's enjoy my life. Huh? I have enough money, so I can enjoy my life. But what God said? Tonight, I will take your spirit. If he died tonight, although he is a millionaire or billionaire, it is nothing. He will carry nothing. We need to think about why God said to this rich man, You fool, you are really foolish. Although he prepared a lot of things for his physical life, but he did not prepare anything for his spirit. Nowadays, it is not different. Many people, they only focus on the money and material things and physical life to enjoy their life. But they are not prepared to meet God. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. Proverbs 27, verse 1 says, Baba Sain Kopo. Do you know what will happen tomorrow? Nobody knows. Every day we can see this kind of accident, motorcycle accident. Car accident. Many people die. They do not know this kind of accident. Bus also, truck accident. James chapter 4, verse 14. Bazaar in Punatin, Sabai Sabai. You do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? Your life is like a vapor, huh? it will vanish away immediately. Yeah. 2015, because of the earthquakes in Nepal, so many people died. They did not know they shall die because of this earthquakes. And what about the super typhoon in the Takloban? Everything is destroyed. This uh, December so, uh, in the Cebu, Dumageti, and uh, Bakulod, so many houses destroyed by the super typhoon. Every house is the destroyed, and then electric fall, fall down, no electricity, no water. So, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12 says, Baba Sain Kopo. So, 
So the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. We do not know when will be the last day of in my life. That's why we should not postpone this important matter. We should solve this problem immediately. You know the Beirut the explosion in last year. Look at this video clip. First, there was a fire, a huge column of smoke rising from Beirut's port, then a massive explosion. The force of the blast was so strong, its shockwaves blew out glass and tore buildings across the city, ripping balconies off onto the streets. The moment captured on camera during this bridal photo shoot sparking panic. The blast was about more than 150 miles away, even registering on US seismographs used to measure earthquakes. At least a hundred people are confirmed dead, thousands are injured. The city's wounded in desperate need of care, looking to St. George's Hospital, but its medics can't enter the building since it is on the verge of collapse. They lost four nurses themselves. President Trump expressing sympathy last night, offering assistance from the U.S. Our prayers go out to all the victims and their families. The sun rose Wednesday morning, revealing the devastating scene at Beirut Court. The explosion linked to 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate stored unsafely in a warehouse, the same material as the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, but reportedly a thousand times stronger. Officials aren't commenting on the cause of the explosion, but so far it appears to be accidental. New York-based artist Michelle Abu shot these videos showing the immediate aftermath. And as I'm walking, all of a sudden, everything starts shaking, and we hear this double bang. And before we could even think of what to do next, everything's going. Pope Francis leading prayers for Lebanon. This tragedy is estimated to have resulted in hundreds of thousands made homeless. Charities say more than a million Lebanese were already on the breadline before this latest crisis hit. Much of Lebanon's population have lived through two wars. It's affected by serious conflict, absorbing a million refugees, an economic crisis, and COVID-19. Every time Lebanon tries to rebuild, it seems to face another tragedy. Julia McFarland, ABC News, London. The people, they didn't know uh, this kind of disaster will be upon them. In, day, in our daily life also, we can face any kind of the accident, motorcycle accident, car accident. Yeah, like this. Yeah, the people, they are talking and they are working. But suddenly, who knows this kind of accident will happen? So, this Bible seminar is really important to solve our spiritual problem. I think many people already spend so many hours for your physical matters. But this week, only five days. So, today already finished. So four days more, eight hours. Please invest the, your life to solve your spiritual problem. Tomorrow we are going to study more important things about the historical and archaeological evidences through the Bible. So I really hope every the invitees the will attend this Bible seminar continuously until the last day.
Will you attend the Bible seminar tomorrow again? Hmm? Promise? Ah, okay. So we will study this Bible seminar tomorrow again. Okay, let's pray. Holy and gracious, our Heavenly Father God, thank you for giving us this wonderful chance to study your word. Today we learned about the God's creation. We believe all these things are created by God. And also, we learned about the purpose of our life through this Bible seminar. We know we came to this world to get the eternal life. Although we are busy because of the many things, but let us have a priority to solve our spiritual problem. Please help us to attend this Bible seminar tomorrow again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, maraming salamat po.